Okay, here's the cut and dry version of antibody production, antibody response as appropriate for uh, higher level biology. Please watch the animation and the, the animation in the cartoon version that I uploaded to help you make sense. But when you're actually recording your notes, you can uh, put this down really quick. So um, in general, why are we we're producing antibodies as in response to being invaded by some kind of pathogen and uh, pathogen invades the body, the immune system is going to produce antibodies to combat and these antibodies are produced by B, B cells, they're called B lymphocyte cells. Um, helper T cells and macrophages are also involved. This helper T cells are really, really important here. I said in the previous video, these get targeted by HIV. And after you understand the role of helper T cells, you can start to see why destroying these, why HIV is so scary and why it, re it actually reduces your immune system pretty badly. Um, and then you can develop AIDS. Um, okay, I said in the video, macrophages basically take in the antigens by endocytosis. They process them and they're gonna present them like trophies um, on an MHC protein, stands for major histocompatibility complex, and atta they attach them to these proteins. The MHC protein with the antigen is then moved to the plasma membrane by exocytosis and is displayed on the surface of the macrophage. Helper T cells have receptors that can actually bind to those antigens, and then the helper T cells themselves can actually become activated as a result of some signal being passed from the macrophage to the T cell. That's first step. Or actually, if you want to separate this into two steps, you can go like that. Okay. Um, now you have, a, you have activated helper T cells that are flowing around there and macrophages that are holding their trophies. I'm going through this really, really fast, so post the question, but definitely watch the, the cartoon version of it. Hopefully it doesn't confuse you anymore. Inactive B cells, B cells are just, meanwhile, these B cells are flowing around and there's a lot of different B cells. They're all specific. They have different types of antibodies. Um, you're hoping to be, have an antibody that actually matches the antigen of the current invader. All right, so inactive B cells have antibodies in their plasma membrane. If these antibodies actually match an antigen, then the antigen will actually bind to the antibody. And uh, what will happen is that that's your special B cell. That's your special B cell that has the correct antibody out of the millions of variations that you have. That has the correct antibody to actually bind with the current bad pathogen that is invading your body. The rest of the, the, rest of the B cells that have different antibodies don't count. They can't bind. They can't do anything to help out. Okay. Um, yeah, there's all kinds of analogies you can use for this. So let's just move on with this. An activated helper T cell with receptors then can, with the same uh, with the same antigen, receptors with the same antigen binds to the B cell. T cell then sends a signal over to the B cell and the B cell becomes activated. So it's almost like saying you need several sources of verification before you can allow the next stage to happen. Because what we want to do is because we found the right B cell that's, pr that's producing the correct antibody that matches the specific antigen, we want to actually make, a, make tons of copies of this particular antibody. But we don't want to waste a lot of body resources to do that unless we're totally sure. That's why the helper T cell actually comes in. So even if the antibody has, has, has bound to the antigen, if you don't have a helper T cell around there that has actually picked up the same signal, then you're not going to be able to produce this clone of a whole bunch of the same antibodies. So it's very interesting. It has all these checkpoints here to make sure we don't go down that path unless we're absolutely sure that's the right path to go down. The activated B cells, after they've been activated by this uh, T cell here, uh, start to divide by mitosis and form a clone of cells. We call this clonal selection. The cells get bigger, uh, more cytoplasm, and they become plasma cells. They have an extensive network of rough endoplasmic reticulum and if you know rough endoplasmic reticulum why is it rough it's ribosomes that, that are on there that makes it look bumpy what are the ribosomes for the ribosomes let me think make proteins what kind of proteins do i want to make i want to make more antibodies so these plasma cells are making the correct antibody that has been activated and uh, just secretes loads, loads and loads of these antibodies. What good is loads and loads of these? What, 
why do we want all these extra antibodies? Well, if you have a whole bunch of these antibodies, since they bind to the antigen, they'll just spread through your uh, blood system and bind to the antigens of all the bad guys. It's like uh, sending out all, what is it? It's like tagging a bad guy with arrows. So you have these big clumsy trolls going around who are just big and smash everything, smash, smash. But they smash everything, but you want to make it easier for them to know what to smash. So the antibodies are like little, I don't know, sticky notes or arrows or arrows with sticky notes that say attack me and the arrows stick into the bad guys and then if you're a big troll going around and you see uh, a bunch of things with arrows and sticky notes you can't read but you see arrows and sticky notes and for you that means hulk smash and so these trolls go and identify so the antibodies help to identify and target what it is that the phagocytes and macrophages have to go and actually attack. I hope that made sense. I should do another cartoon. Well, that wasn't really a cartoon. I should do another one with the Hulk. Okay, let me write that down. All right. Okay, I think that is pretty good. A few last steps here. In the end, we have memory cells. Some of those B cells get left over. Uh, B cells and T cells, and they're called memory cells. This is the basis of how immunity works. So once you have actually spent all this energy making a clone of the correct B cells containing the correct antibodies for that particular invader, maybe it was chickenpox, well they stick around. Uh, a few of them stick around well enough so that next time if chickenpox shows up, the chickenpox virus shows up, um, you can launch an immune response really really fast because you already have a high concentration of the correct antibody. That's how it works. It's really really interesting. And it makes a lot of sense. So these memory cells stick around, allow for rapid response. They give long-term immunity to these diseases. Okay, it should all make sense. It's really, really interesting. It's actually a lot more complex than this, but so is everything else we learn in biology. When you learn it at, at different levels and people are doing more and more research, this, what we've gone through today, is sufficient for you to understand and be able to explain to somebody else and basically take uh, correct steps in your life to stay healthy and as a bonus hopefully to perform well on any kind of IB external standardized exam okay post your questions thanks a lot bye bye